Hello friends and welcome to my channel for another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Jazzing Dioramas 112 scale BVS Batmobile. Now this came out about a year ago from the time of this recording and I hemmed and hawed over it for a long time. As my custom 112, 110 scale Batmobile collection has grown and become more sophisticated, I decided, you know what, it's time to step up from my Mattel version of the Justice League Batmobile to this one. I'm a big fan of what Jazz Inc. is doing and I wanted to support it. I thought this would be a great thing for the channel. So kind of all signs pointed to I should get this thing. So I finally did it. It's here. We're going to take a look at it. So here we are with it out of the box and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It is incredible. Now a little bit about Jazz Inc. They are a company based in the Netherlands. It's a guy named Joost Asink, I believe is how you say his name and his family, I believe it's like his wife, his son, his father. They started out making dioramas for Star Wars Hot Toys, I wanna say. I know they have like a one six scale Millennium Falcon cockpit uh, and they did like some other background type of stuff for Star Wars figures. I'm not a big Star Wars person, so I don't know all the, the names of it, unfortunately, but they ventured into Batmobiles. Uh, I think this was the first one that they did it's officially licensed, so it is licensed by Warner Brothers, DC, etc. And they work closely with them to get like all the schematics, all the specs, all the little details right. They recently put out the 66 Batmobile. They are currently working on the 2022 Robert Pattinson Batmobile and also the 89 Batmobile. Now, this is the only one they've made in 112 scale so far. Yoast has said on several streams that they are trying to find a way to make their 112 scale stuff more economically available for 112 scale collectors. The people who collect 16 scale are used to paying like super high prices. Those of us in 112 scale, you know, a lot of the stuff we collect is retail, right? So it comes out, you know, you can get it at Target and Walmart. So there's some sticker shock involved when you purchase something like this. Something I really love about Jazz Inc. is they are very communicative with the collecting community. They have a Facebook group, which I'm not a part of because I'm not on Facebook, but uh, I know that they talk with folks a lot on there. They're very open and upfront, and uh, I think that's really, really fantastic because with other companies, you don't hear from them ever. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know why they're doing certain things. So I think that that aspect, along with their impeccable customer service, really makes Jazz Inc. just head and shoulders above the rest in terms of not only the quality of what they're creating, but how easy it is to actually get a hold of them about it. When you email their customer service, they get back to you within 24 hours, as is my personal experience anyway. So uh, I really wanna shout them out for that. And uh, you know, I wanted to support this because they wanna make more stuff in this scale from what they've said. They've talked about doing their 89 Batmobile in a crowdfunding capacity so that they can try to meet a minimum order number and keep the cost of it more in line with what 112 collectors expect to pay. Uh, somewhere, you know, they, they mentioned somewhere in, I think a 250, $350 range, which I think for what they make is an absolutely incredible price. So that's a bit about them. Uh, they have a YouTube channel if you wanna check out their stuff. Now there are several reviews of this vehicle already. As I mentioned, it, people started receiving this a year ago or so. Uh, but you know, my channel is heavily Batmobile focused a lot of the time. And I thought, you know, one, folks who subscribe to this channel and who enjoy these videos might wanna hear my take on this. And also uh, I wanted to add my voice to the chorus of people singing the praises of Jazz Inc. so that hopefully they do more of this stuff and we get more of it. People may not even know about them, especially 112 collectors because they primarily make 1.6 scale stuff. I thought it could be helpful for people who maybe follow my channel for the Batmobile stuff that I do but never heard about this to learn about it. I'm in no way affiliated with Jazz Inc. I've never spoken to any of them in a promotional capacity. I am a customer who bought this with my own funds and wanted to talk about it on my channel. So let's get it onto the workbench and take a look at the details. So here it is on the turntable. And as I mentioned, I mean, this thing is just utterly beautiful. So the way they do it is really cool. Now they did have like a Justice League version of it that you could get. The version that does both might be sold out. I think it's maybe one or the other now. I wanted the BVS version, as I mentioned, I have the Mattel Justice League and it's got the extra like armor plate and the cannon here and the, the bigger guns and stuff. 
and I just didn't want all that. I love the sleek look of, of this version. I love the symmetrical canopy and that's what I wanted. So in order to make that possible, what they've done is they have magnets in here and you can add the little side cannons. I believe you can swap these out if you get that version. Um, this comes off and these are articulated, which is cool. And I mean, just look at the weathering detail on this. You know, it's a beautiful dry brushing. It's not overdone. Now the packaging boasts rubber tires. I don't think these are rubber. I could be mistaken. They, they feel like hard plastic. Maybe they're a hard rubber, I'm not an expert on rubber, so I, I don't know. But I think this is a smart move because rubber tires can tend to flatten over time. So if this is just a higher density version, that's a good thing. Otherwise you would get flat spots like a lot of RC cars will have. These front wheels do articulate so you can turn them. They have headlights built in. And when you add two AAA batteries on the bottom, you get these nice bright headlights that move with the tires. So that's very, very cool. Let me turn the lights off so you can see how bright the lights are. Not too bright. They're just right for the scale, I think. Really nice. Now, along with that, the interior dash does light up, as you can see here. It has these little screens here with decals on them. It's getting a little blown out, but it's, it's really, really nice to the naked eye. It looks like a like a little lit up screen and they're they're applied really nicely too they're not like crooked or peeling or anything while we're zoomed in i want to point out this cool detail this little panel right here that is painted a bright kind of silver and has that number stamped into it that is a detail from the actual screen used car and the designer's intent there was to make it look like this car has been through it and has seen some repairs a better look at it from the other side here there are little clips added onto it and some other little details that make it different from this version to really make it look like it's had some work done to it i think that is exceptionally cool just as a detail from the actual screen use vehicle but also to replicate in 112 scale so you can you can do storytelling on things like this and that's what i really enjoy about it zooming in on some other areas you can see really nicely applied decals the, the jet intake here, no step, charge surface, do not touch. Uh, you know, they're really nicely applied. They're very seamless on there uh, and it has them on both sides. Now, something that's pretty cool about this Batmobile, and I don't know if this has been talked about much, but there are some similarities to the 89 Batmobile. You've got this kind of rounded shroud intake here that the 89 has on its side. And you've got this mechanical stuff that you can see down on the side panel, which is also something that the 89 has. Just kind of a cool little, uh, I don't know if those were homage, but I thought that was pretty dope. Going in closer for the interior here. Again, really nice paint applications and dry brushing on this panel in here. I mean, look at the silver on these straps. This is like a roll bar with, you know, this is presumably like foam padding that it would have in the real version. And I mean, they just nailed it with the look here. I believe this comes out so that you can put Batman in more easily. And we'll do that shortly here. And I think it's also part of the conversion to the Justice League version. The seats come separate in the packaging and those get slotted in with magnets. So, you know, it's got these really nice looking racing seats with some cool like orange lining. The steering wheel does turn. It doesn't do anything to the wheels, but you know, I can't fault them for that. That's... And in case I forgot to mention it, the steering wheel does come out. Uh, it just pops right out and that will help you get Batman in there more easily. So that's a very, very nice feature. I did that with my 89 Batmobile Custom as well. Uh, and I'm glad that they were thinking of that uh, when they made this. Really, really nice detail work in there. I mean, that is not easy. You know, I try to do this stuff myself and it's tough. So, you know, granted they have a factory and whatnot, but still, I mean, to replicate this kind of thing to this level of quality on this scale is so, so difficult. And I'm sure a lot of this stuff is hand painted in the factory. So, you know, this really speaks to the artisans that they have working on this stuff. Now I want to turn the lights on again with the light in the room on, and we'll see if we can see this stuff a little better. It does show up a little better with the lights on. Oh, and there's more on the left here. You can see more light up stuff in there. 
this is just gorgeous. A bit more of the interior detail here. You can see he's got this cool kind of grill on the back, you know, just very, very nicely sculpted in there. It's fun, you know, I'm so well acquainted with the 89 Batmobile now, having customized the McFarlane one on the channel and, you know, spending weeks on it. Seeing the similarities between the designs is pretty cool. You know, some of that is just because they're vehicles, but also, you know, you could tell that they probably looked at what had come before and kind of wanted to pay homage to it. So that's pretty cool. Like the, the shape of this, you know, these little, I presume this is like a fire suppression system here. The, 66 Batmobile has a fire extinguisher in a similar spot. So it's just, this thing is just so cool. I love the way those doors look when they're open. And these have some nice detailing on the inside as well. Now let's uh, let's get Batman in there. So here we have the Mezco 112 Collective BVS Batman. And this guy's actually gonna be getting some customization upgrade stuff happening on the channel. So stay tuned for that. That'll probably be the next video. Uh, I'm going to swap the head with it, one that I'm repainting to make, make it look more accurate. I'm going to be altering the suit so it looks a little bit more like the one in the film. Uh, this already does have a wired tape on it. Let's see about getting this guy in there. All right, so I had to switch to the, the Justice League version of Batman because it has the soft cape. The wired cape that I have on my BBS Batman is just, there's too much material, too much wire, and it wouldn't let me stuff him in there all the way. Uh, but this is the same body, basically the same figure, except more armor on him. And he goes in there pretty well. Now, keep in mind, Mezco figures are large for a 112 scale. This vehicle being a true 112 scale would mean that it would fit best with the Mafex or SH Figure Arts version of Batman. But to show you with a larger figure that skews much more toward like 110 scale vehicles, he goes in, that shuts all the way. He's all set in there. So... Pretty awesome. You can't really see him in the windows very well. They're pretty reflective, but yeah, he's in there. My only critique of this vehicle is that there's no easy way to open the doors. You have to take this off and lift this way. It's not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal, but I think with the amount of magnets in this thing and the way that they've utilized them in the construction of it, it maybe would have been a cool thing to have a magnet, a small one in this area, and then it comes with a separate magnet and you can open it that way. Similar to how you take the gun covers off on the 89 Hot Toys Batmobile. Again, minor critique, you know, that's certainly Monday morning quarterbacking. Opening it that way is like not that big a deal. How often are you gonna be opening and closing this thing anyway? But yeah, I mean, this thing is pretty perfect, I would have to say. Now I did want to do a comparison real quick between the Jazz Inc. and the Mattel version. Now, as you can see, they are virtually the exact same size. Um, they're the same length, you know, maybe off by some millimeters, but very, very close. But I just want to show you what the difference is in terms of what you get for what you pay. The Jazz Inc. version is a much more accurate color. It's more of a darker gunmetal, whereas the Mattel version is almost like a kind of a coppery brown tint to it. Now, I don't know if this is just my version, but there's this kind of weird discoloration that has happened on the door. It's a different type of plastic, I think, maybe than the rest. I mean, you can see it's kind of mottled and spotted. Again, you know, I don't know if that's some kind of reaction to just air or what, but this is also like a darker color. Again, I mentioned the stress marks on the plastic here, you know, and this version actually has some additional dry brushing, I think that wasn't on, because I, I did buy this used from somebody and they had done some more dry brushing on it. So I think some of that is additional, but you know, the wheels on this are very clearly plastic with a seam line down the center. The tread is different and you can see these wheels are wider. So just much more accurate. Obviously this one has working lights. Now, the biggest difference is gonna be in the interior. So the interior of the door, you can see this is where the kind of cheap, shiny plastic aspect of it comes in. It's got this sort of, you know, functional, but kind of dirty looking hinge system. The seat is well sculpted, but zero paint apps, as well as the rest of the interior. The steering wheel does turn on this one, and you can actually move the shifter on this one, which is cool. Uh, and this is rubber, like a soft plastic, so that moves around. But as you can see, we look at the Jazz Inc. one, which we saw already, but again, just an incredible, incredible difference here. I wanted to show that comparison because, you know, whenever we have something like this, it's a, a high ticket item. 
people inevitably want to compare the two and go, oh, you know, for 60 bucks retail, you get pretty close. And you do. I mean, this is this is a fine vehicle, especially for the price point. But, you know, if you want high end detail, screen accuracy, nothing beats something like this Jazz Inc car. So to wrap up on this, here it is with Batman in front of it. And you can see how well it scales outside of it, too. Just an absolutely beautiful pairing and I'm so stoked on this. Very, very excited to have this. As I mentioned, you know, I've thought long and hard about this. I was like, oh, should I get it? Should I not get it? It's so expensive, but they have a payment plan and I found that really helpful. And I wanna give a big shout out to all of the subscribers and viewers of my channel. Your uh, patronage made this possible, frankly. I purchased this with funds that I got from YouTube, from the views on my videos of Batmobiles and Bat Caves and etc. So uh, I just want to thank you all for your continued support because that really helped make getting this possible and justifiable <laughs> because I can, you know, get it for the channel and put it all back into the channel. So big shout out to everybody and thank you so much. So here it is on the shelf where it's going to live. It is accompanying my 2022 Batmobile and custom McFarlane Batman figure. And then to the left, we've got my custom tumbler that I built along with the NECA Begins figure. We've got my custom Dark Knight shelf there. And then of course, down and next to it, we have my custom 89 Batcave setup and custom McFarlane Batmobile. And there's the animated Batman and his Batmobile. So as you can see, this is uh, you know going into a bit of a showcase of Batmobiles. And that's a big part of why I wanted to have this ultimate version on my shelf. This is, you know, the best one possible. So I had to do it. Now, eventually on the channel, this will be turned into a BVS Batcave diorama display as well. It's one of the only shelves on this uh, setup that has a blank wall behind it. So <laughs> I'm really anxious to get this thing done, especially with uh, this new Batmobile. So that's something that will be coming up on the channel. If you're interested in seeing that, please hit subscribe and follow along and you can see the process of me building this one on the channel as well. So that's going to wrap up this video. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, you know the drill. If you hit subscribe, you will be able to follow along as I make cool stuff like these dioramas, as I review stuff like this Batmobile, new figures that I get, customs that I make. If you are interested in helping to support this channel so I can do more of this kind of stuff, I've got t-shirts available. I'll put a link in the description below for my Redbubble page. Uh, that's a site where basically you pick the design you want, the kind of shirt you want it on, the size, and they print it and ship it to you. Got several to choose from that are all sort of comic book and action figure themed. Also linked in the description below are some of my graphic novels. I'm a comic book writer and artist by trade and got a couple graphic novels you might enjoy. One is called Count. It's my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. It's a swashbuckling action-packed revenge story about revolution and retribution. Very, very proud of it. I also have a link to Retroactive. It's my sort of James Bond meets Groundhog Day time travel spy story. So that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.